NBC4 News at 11 a.m. starts now. Right now at 11 a.m., back on the picket lines, we're learning new details this morning on the hopeful end to the Hollywood Riders' Strike. This tentative agreement could end the Riders' Strike, but the Hollywood stalemate is far from over. NBC4's Ted Chen Live Force in Burbank this morning. Ted. Michael, actors back on the picket line this morning with one big question uh, facing them. How soon might they go back to work now? It looks like, uh, now that it looks like the writers are seemingly going back to work soon. Let's show you the picket line right now. Actors do share some similar concerns with the writers that the writers seem to have resolved with these studios and streamers, things like residuals for streaming shows. But actors also have unique concerns with regard to AI, such as their likenesses being scanned and used without proper compensation. So how how soon SAG-AFTRA could come to a deal with the AMPTP, which represents the studios and streamers, will determine how soon Hollywood will truly come back to normal. And that's been jeopardized now that SAG-AFTRA has voted to authorize a strike against the video game industry. They do remain in negotiations with video game companies, so a strike can still be avoided. But so far, no new negotiations have been scheduled with studios and streamers represented by the AMPTP. We are at Disney Studios here in Burbank as the picketers resume and they'll be picketing until noon today so until both strikes are resolved uh, that's when Hollywood can go back to normal so for us viewers watch a lot of TV and movies getting our favorite scripted shows back seeing our favorite stars uh, promote their movies that could be weeks or months away reporting live from Burbank Ted Chen NBC4 News Michael back to you all right Ted thank you Comcast the corporation that owns our parent company NBC Universal is represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers some employees of the NBC News group are also represented by the WGA and SAG after we of course will be tracking that WGA vote throughout the day right here on NBC4 and for instant updates sent right to your phone just download the NBCLA app. President Joe Biden here with striking union workers on the picket line in Michigan today, supporting the walkup because, as he puts it, auto workers sacrificed pensions and paychecks to save the automakers more than a decade ago. NBC's Jay Gray live for us in Wayne, Michigan this morning. Jay. Yeah, and Michael, you can hear the support from passing motorists here. Take a look at the line behind us at this Ford plant in Wayne, and you can see it is packed and, and a bit charged after the president's visit to the Detroit area today. Uh, very appreciative, a lot of these striking union workers, on the fact that he's shining some light on this, and obviously that he's taking their side in this fight uh, between the union and the big three U.S. automakers. We have heard from those automakers in written statements in both, as you would expect expect downplaying the president's visit, obviously, uh, because he is siding with the workers in this event. Uh, Ford saying that they are going to be the ones to solve this by finding creative solutions at the bargaining table with the UAW, and GM saying that their focus is in politics but continues to be bargaining in good faith. So that is what is going on as far as this visit. Now remember, this comes a day ahead of former president and current frontrunner for the 2024 Republican nomination, Donald Trump's visit to the Detroit area where he plans to talk with auto workers as well. So the picket line becoming highly politicized over the next couple of days as this continues to drag on. And the bottom line in this is the sticking point continues to be paid. The union has asked for a 40 percent raise, 20 percent of that up front. Uh, the automakers to this point reportedly offering about half, 20, 21 percent with 10 percent up front. They're also looking, these workers, for a better pension and benefits plan as well as a reduction in the uh, pay discrepancy between new hires and those who are longtime employees. They think people working on the line next to each other should receive basically the same pay. Still miles apart according to both sides. The negotiations, though, Michael, are continuing. All right, Jay Gray, live from there in Wayne, Michigan. Turning now to decision 2024, the Republican presidential candidates hit the state the stage tomorrow night for another debate, this time at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley. All right, here's a look at the seven candidates who will be on that stage. North Dakota Governor Doug Brugham, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, former Vice President Mike Pence, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Now, former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson didn't qualify for this debate because he's not polling high enough. 
Former President Donald Trump is skipping this debate altogether. And a showdown between governors now officially set. Fox News announcing that Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis and California Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom will square off in a 90-minute debate on November 30th. This will take place in Georgia. Sean Hannity will host. The House of Representatives back in session. Want to give you a live look here right now. The deadline to avoid a government shutdown is now just days away. We're talking Saturday night, but at this point, there's no solution in sight. Small group of Republicans now throwing up a roadblock. They want to see more cuts to the budget. If there is a government shutdown, millions of federal workers won't get a paycheck until the government reopens, but some will still have to go to work, including the TSA and members of the military. Some federal offices and entities will also be impacted, including national parks, museums, even the Center for Disease Control. I want to give you a live look right now from Mount Wilson. It's sunny and warm, but for how long? I'm going to bring in the expert meteorologist Stephanie <laughs> Elbow. Check it all in your first alert forecast. Hey, Steph. Hey, enjoy it today. Temperatures there are pleasant right around normal for this time of year because we head into later this week and we're talking about some changes. Right now we're checking out this view of Malibu. Look at this shot. It kind of looks fake, right? Sort of like a picture, some postcard. No, this is the real deal. Temperatures right now in Malibu, low 70s at the moment. Temperatures are rather the satellite and radar pointing out. We've had very limited cloud coverage earlier today. You may remember around this time yesterday, we had a little bit more cloud coverage across the region, and that certainly impacted the temperatures today. Look at this. Because of the limited clouds, temperatures a lot warmer now compared to 24 hours ago. Five, six degrees warmer in some areas, even up to seven degrees warmer now compared to just 24 hours ago across the region. We're seeing lots of orange here. Temperatures currently at 73 in West Covina, 75 in Ontario, 79 in San Bernardino. Lower 70s in Santa Clarita, 80 degrees in Van Nuys. So what can we expect as we continue this afternoon? Plenty of sunshine, temperatures a little bit warmer compared to yesterday. Repeat again as we head into Wednesday, those temperatures stay right around average. And then late week, we start to talk about cooler temperatures and maybe the slight chance for some wet weather this weekend. Details in a bit for now. Back to you, Michael. All right, Stephanie, we'll see you then. Thanks. An update now on the Malibu Triathlon. It will go on as planned this weekend after the Malibu City Council voted unanimously to forge ahead. Our range this past winter and spring left part of the course covered in water, which is now occupied by a group of endangered fish. Race organized proposed a course change, which was approved by city leaders. Shattered glass and quick getaways. Glendale police are investigating a series of burglaries that happened early this morning. NBC 4's Christian Casadas live in Glendale. Christian, what are police telling you this morning? Well, Michael, I just got off the phone with Glendale police and they would not confirm if they made any arrests in this case. But I can tell you businesses are frustrated. Let me show you why this beauty salon here, the front door, all boarded up. The business right next door, the same boarded up. I can tell you six of the nine shops in this shopping center were burglarized before sunrise and the crime was caught on camera. Check out this security camera video capturing the crime. Watch as two people smash through the beauty salon's front door and quickly make their way to the cash register. One of those men even carrying a crowbar. Now, a few feet away, another business is also burglarized. The culprit smashed through the front door and they head to the register. Now, business owners on Glen Oaks Boulevard and Rosedale tell us this happened around 3 o'clock Tuesday morning. None of the business owners would talk to us on camera because they fear the thieves would strike again. Now, throughout the morning, each of the six small businesses have been working on getting the front doors repaired. Now, they tell me this is not the first time that this, this has happened, but again, six businesses burglarized overnight and we expect an update from uh, Glendale police and of course we will have that information for you as it becomes available. We are live in Glendale, Christian Casadas, NBC4 News. All right, talk about timing here. Another way to crack down on organized retail theft here in Southern California, the new tool being introduced. Plus, Uber's new partnership that will change the way you hail a ride. And Christmas in September. So are you team holiday cheer or jeer? The retailers already wrapping up that holiday spirit.